Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Letter, where Luke is being a bratwurst. It's his official name now. It's it, Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we were trying to decide if we should keep listening or move on. I think we decided we'll move on because we've already had this conversation. I don't know that we're going to get anything new out of it. Right. So I say we move on and see what else we can find. I really kind of don't want to explore the rest of the house, but, you know, yeah. here we are. Okay. No matter how bizarre their conversation might get, I really must go. Not to mention that standing here where I have no more reason to loiter just feels wrong. Besides, the magic word here is privacy, and I respect that. Good for you. Yeah. You're not a bratwurst. <laughs> Keep it in mind, and I won't have a guilty conscience filled to the brim with secrets of the rich and famous in my hands. That's a fair point. I take the stairs two at a time if I wasn't in danger of getting stabbed by my baggage and if nobody else was in the foyer. But as Johans takes the box from me, I only give him a small smile. There's no reason to gossip about the peculiar conversation of his employers. He probably knows it all anyway. Yeah, right. He's probably, yeah, there we go. He's probably heard much odder things from them and he doesn't seem to be a cat or a dog person either. As soon as I follow him into the kitchen, he raises a hand to stop me. Nine. <laughs> I know you are a very skilled in architect, and I have seen your work. Uh-huh. But this shall be my kitchen, and I shall fix it according to my wishes. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> kind of weird. Anyone would think that pots and knives are supposed to go anywhere but the kitchen, huh? I assume he's gotten them confused. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> confused? Talking about How does that even worst? work? Yeah. I understand covers, carpets, or even curtains getting mixed up. Hey, I'd even understand pots being mixed up with silver decor. But knives? Oh, he has a collection of ornamental ones from his f father. It takes them everywhere he goes, wherever he moves. I guess that makes sense. A bit. Still odd. Wonder if it was going to be in German. I was thinking, that's what I was thinking. He merely shrugs before going back to work. The movers work efficiently even when they're left alone, and they do quick work of their responsibilities. The head foreman comes standing in the doorway to consult me on this or that, and I have to go help out every now and then. But they pretty much have everything up to standards. They skip lunch entirely, not even realizing when they do so. Nevertheless, all is well as the butler gets to heating up the leftover bubble and squeak from breakfast, and makes a generous batch of fish and chips for them. Mmm. Hmm. I like fish and chips. Yeah. Most likely a simple... Most likely simple in comparison to what he serves the rights, but well done nonetheless. That smells good. Want to wrap up some for me to go? Wow, that's presumptuous. A little bit. It's an idle observation more than anything. My thoughts as they are preoccupy me. If there are any left, one can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves them. Even my husband. And he's American. What are you applying? It's because it's like deep fried fish and french fries that are deep fried. What can go wrong with that? <laughs> Mmm, delicious. I really do hate getting so up close and personal with my clients. It's a distraction. It is obvious to me that I've gotten my priorities all wrong when I can't help but think about what I heard, what I learned about the right couple. These things have a way of creeping up on a person. Thoughts, ideas, whether they are fact or fiction. They creep up and fester, crawl and writhe in a way that twists. I hear giggling, delighted, and mocking. Huh? They creep up and... The sensation of fingers ghosting briefly on my arm caused me to freeze and hiss. Don't! I half expect her to be there. Oh, it's probably Hana. Whoa, no need to Ooh, scream it's bloody wars. murder. It's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. You're a dick. <sighs> but it's just brought worst. Don't do that again. Ever. I don't like being scared. Though I don't believe in the likes of spooks, being startled is not on top of the list of things Marianne liked. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach or we'd have gotten on friendlier terms with something like a rolling pin. What was that reaction? Were you really scared? No one likes being creeped up on. Has just wait till the ghost comes you after you. Stories? He just loves to scare people. Isn't that right, Brother Gurriam? The Brutler's expression is unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rights, aside from vague amusement. There must have been something there though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. The expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost cruel. But neither of them spoke even as Johans leaves the room to serve the workers their late lunch. So, now that we're alone, 
Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Or Tilly, kill your wife. Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get okay. you. Okay, well, he's okay. not wrong. But, but he's such a bratwurst. Like, <laughs> come on, do you really have to be a child about this? That's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. It would be a relief, actually, if those rumors of this place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing a dead person, isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means there would be such things such as ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. <laughs> On the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking if around. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright, you haven't noticed anything weird here? A simple enough question on the surface, yet I notice the man stiffen as the question leaves my mouth. I wouldn't have noticed it if I wasn't watching his reaction intently, but in his eyes I see something dangerous. It depends on your definition of the word weird. Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Yes. Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Well, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I kind of hope the witch kills him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess the of all the people, is just strange for me. It's a unique project. <laughs> no strange men or women lurking about then? This is no. a weird conversation. A dead teenager would technically qualify as strange, but yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to go over well. Not that I know of, but I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, anyone suspicious, and you Ooh. report it. Immediately. I'm starting He's to seen something. I'm thinking so. I just think that like he can't be the first one to admit that he's seeing it. Well, so he that's why he is I, like the typical alpha male. So I wonder if that's uh what did we oh we got points. I didn't even look after we made our last decision, so we did good not spying on them. Well, good news is if this is relationship points of some sort, we can score with Hana or Bratwurst. Yeah. I'd rather go Hana. I think that goes without saying. The concern he have on the the concern he have on the talk of security is quickly gone. His arrogant smug smirk returns, if a bit subdued. Whatever smarmy remark or innuendo he has at the ready never comes through though, as voices from the dining hall ring out. Oh, um, Zach's here. Zach's here. Nah, I just freelance mostly uh, for magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but... Oh, are you getting nervous that your woman's really looking, listening to. and talking to somebody else? At least not all the time. If you weren't such a bratwurst. It's true. That would be the magazine photographer, I pres presume. As always, Mrs. Wright talks in such a kind and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. It certainly puts people at ease around her. It sounds like it's working on the photographer, too. Hearing them, though, seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. At least, if a small scowl is anything to go by. Is he jealous? Oh, uh, no. I feel like asking if he's all, nah, he's all right is not the, the mood. Yeah. You're not going to go out there and join Mrs. Wright? No, that was wrong. Break. I actually... I was leaning I was leaning towards lightening the mood anyway. But there's like a small part of me that's like he probably wants someone to show concern. You're starting to look strained. If you want your picture taken so badly, I'm sure the photographer would oblige. No, because he's now he's just gonna get defensive. What is it that you want to do then? Films. Documentaries mostly. But Maybe if you didn't cheat on everything that walked, we wouldn't have this problem in your marriage. Just saying. 
It's not wrong. I'm working on the thing, actually. We We're also need running to catch into a theory from the that he's not really blonde. You're starting to sound like him. Hmm? I think he dyes his hair. <laughs> his eyebrows are very, very dark for a blonde. <laughs> That's true. No, I'm not joining Hana for an interior design magazine photo. What am I? A piece of furniture? Well, look, did a lot of you have anything else crucial to do today? Marianne. Okay. So, considering since you married into money, technically you are the furniture. So No, he had it because he had money from his business. Yeah, but she had way more money than him. There are still some little things to do. It isn't the end of the day yet. Yes, yes, but you're paid hourly, aren't you? Per day? Really, I don't care. You and the others can just take off for the day. Why is he dismissing us early all of a sudden? Is this about the possible security threat? Did my question get him all wary and paranoid that he would just send the workers and I away? I realize that threats are of actual concern to these rich and powerful people. I imagine whether anyone wants to or not, they get a few enemies here and there. But I'm sure the foreman and his works can be trusted and are of no threat. Well, at least I trust the people I'm working with. I understand if he doesn't, he doesn't know them from a can of paint. So, won't it be safer if there are people around who can watch their back? You're the boss. Watch your My back. being paid by the day aside, I won't be held responsible for any significant delay caused by your decisions. I'll try to get around that, of course, but I'll just remind you of the fact. Whatever. Take forever with the house. I don't give a bloody damn. Ooh. Don't you worry, you're still getting your money. Just sort off. Go crawl around a pub and find yourself a good lay. Whoa! Whoa. Paranoid or aggravated as he might be, the, this conversation certainly didn't have to warrant that sort of remark. Maybe I will. Walking out of the kitchen, I just accept the fact that whatever he says will go while under his roof. Uh, there we go. Mrs. Wright and the photographer are still far too busy in conversation to notice me, even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I didn't want to ruin their fun. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Kind of wish it wouldn't go through like conversations like that that don't really matter that we've already seen. I know. Like it made sense to like hear them from outside, but that just seemed weird. Going to the foyer has me stumble upon the family butler once more who raises a brow at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. The Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. Man, I really, I feel like we would have gotten so much more if we had made the right choice a minute ago. Mm. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. I don't doubt it. My ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get here. Granted, there were some difficulties at first because the driver didn't know where the Ermengarde mansion is. He tried to have us hand over GPS coordinates from our smartphones or some other techno babble I didn't care about, <laughs> and the butler didn't understand. But as soon as we told him it's the haunted mansion over in Anselm Village, he knew just the place and finally headed over, albeit with some hesitation. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about that place giving him the willies. It gives me the willies too. I would have loved to snap at him. But as soon as the thought occurs to me, another blossoms in the forefront of my mind. One that has somehow bothered me greatly, more than the exasperation over whiskey and this project, or wanting all of it to stop. There has been no Lorraine whispering over my ears today. Worse, worse, I find myself searching for it, Ooh. searching for her. I'm assuming that's like, Whatever, damn it. Irish. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that it's like, damn it, loose ends, fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. I thought I've already moved past this years ago. And it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. And where else do I go to drink? The same place we picked up the bratwurst. Yeah. Tuesdays are for karaoke's, or for karaoke, and Wednesdays improv. Usually, it's these four guys who did hilarious games. The one with Irish drinking songs are always a crowd favorite. Though I love a good laugh, stand-up comedy isn't my thing, and without Cam or Haruna or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there's several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassing. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! I need you for something! It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice fellow. <laughs> I'd probably have been kicked out of other places by now, or worse. If push comes to shove, all he would do is give me an easy smile and shake of his head, even when he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. He's some Asian guy. Well, alright, Ash. 
I'm pretty sure I've seen him here before a couple times, although he never talks to anyone else except G. The girls used to be all over him too, but he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. <laughs> all right, all right. What is it? Wait. What? What? He looks familiar. No, he doesn't. Does she he? needs someone to help you get home. Bartender, pour the wine. Well, you're oh, I think drunk. that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. The wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. <laughs> I have no hope of getting them back once they're behind the counter. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Because what little sense I have left knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in wrestling a bottle from a sober man. <laughs> but that doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head just like I know he would before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? Are you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one really to chat with, I would have gone home or gone to sleep on the bar right there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try the, to trek back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal and dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? Their talk would have interested me, it would have kept my attention if I gave a damn. But in my current state, I can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me. No! All these words are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sounds that is the pub. And it would have stayed that way, perhaps even drowned, if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy. Okay, I was worried that, like, in my in my head, I was like, because we messed up that one choice, now we're here getting drunk, and we weren't going to pay attention to the conversation. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a water cash on the counter after having too much whiskey, Kansas tipping. Yeah, you know. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Luke fucking right. AKA whiskey, AKA bratwurst. Fucking whiskey. Ah, even without him around, I'm still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck? She Despite this- She swears more when she's drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join them before I pipe up. Is oh, this Lordy. my talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Private conversation here, lady. There's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy, he starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't home. worry, Holmes. She's clean. And she might be able to help you with your... Uh, predicament. Of course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? See, you have a little faith in me, why don't you? I don't have much, and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come running to me for business. Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas! Five feet eleven! Can't miss me! <laughs> I'm like Shorty over here. What's with that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. To add insult to injury, I move directly behind him and use the top of his head as an armrest. But when he shakes me off, I plop into the seat right next to him. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are ya? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, are ya? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McAuliffe. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhymes. What? 
I don't know. This is anyway, literally the worst. Anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke right, right? Or Robbers. something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you. Even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. You wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking. Not Marianne. Yeah, I'm still wondering if we messed something up and that's what, and she's like smashed and now. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. One moment, he's an absolute dickhead. And then he's acting like an actual decent human being the next. I just can't figure him out. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. And I'm not just saying that because I think Hannah's pretty or anything. Luke is a catch too, they both are. But I really cannot, for the love of all things holy, see how they even work out together. So, Luke Wright, have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Anything peculiar? Of note? You're the one being peck pe peachy right about now, Holmes. But nah, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. A giggle bubbles up and I press my cheeks against the cool countertop with my eyes shut tight, just because. Eventually cracking one eye open, just in case they thought I fell asleep, I grin at Holmes. So, Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is it Hannah? Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she or how is she? Well and good. Definitely the nicer of the two and sexy as sin to boot. Not a private detective then. Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if the Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Mmm, pants. I'd take the pants off of... Ah, here we go. Slipping, slipping. I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's a miracle I've been coherent for as long as I have been right now. I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave? You what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you Hopefully think? Hopefully she's not like you. These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. <laughs> Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This will be dismissed, and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Whoa. Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The wave of despair that comes over the both of them is palpable. If feelings had a taste, it'd be bitterer than the beer I'm full of. And it gets me thinking. Though thinking doesn't get me far with too much shite in my system. You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something, something. As och day! No wonder Mr. Wright likes it so much. It's as fishy as he is. Rotten bloke! Maybe that Santos girl is really onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Before I get another word out, there's hands on my shoulders and everything starts to spin. I quickly slap his hands away the best I can and send him the foulest look I can Take muster. Take your hands off me, pipsqueak. I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. But it's just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from BRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just like those spam stuff you get in your emails. And we thought it was some joke or that the girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. I don't know what kind like of that. junk spam mail they get, but I, yeah. don't, I don't get like... Bloody letters? No. Yeah. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey, that's Luke fucking right, you get me. And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. When rich snobs give you that face, no wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them does that, you know? 
I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Anyway, just like I said, in that man... Hey, you okay? <laughs> Holmes? You're looking a bit shaky yourself there. And he really is pale. Paler than before, at least. I can see the gears turning in his head on overtime. Suddenly he shows a card in my hand. On it, his name, Ashton Frey, and his number. He has a number that he answers? I don't think he answers it. <laughs> but he has second thoughts as he grabs it from me and slips it into my pocket. <laughs> you're cute, pretty boy. But I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me. If something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger or if you see anything suspicious, call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... I know what the damn emergency number is. Right, 999. Good. Anyway, I have to run. See you, G. The guy is quick on his feet, already up and at him as soon as the numbers leave his lips. Watching him as he maneuvers through the crowd of other pub goers is enough to tire me out. Fast as he can, he's at the door and throws a smile, and that's all we get before he's gone. Just like that. Boy, what about your drink, boy? I'll go put it on your tab then. Holmes boy always like that, G? Uh, pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'll put your drinks on your tab too. Don't want you to spill your wallets when you look like you're close to spilling yourself. Yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll go take a bit of a cat nap here. Just for a sec or two. Uh, go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. Swimming and cocktails achievement. So yeah, that was because of choices we made. Mumbling a sleepy thanks, I doze off on the spot, face pressed on the counter. Already, I dread the pain I'll have for sleeping in such a position. You don't know that she wouldn't still have been drunk at this point from whatever choice you made. Uh, maybe not. She sounds like she's a drunk. But when you gotta go, you gotta go. Oh, this oh, again. Oh, that's Marianne! Tough. How long have you been standing there, dearie? Come join us, Marianne. We won't bite. Unless you ask, that is. Not that I can get much sleep to begin with. Dot, dot, dot. Do people ever have the feeling they're working on something they really enjoy, but still it eventually tires them out? Because honestly, I've been feeling like this. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous and in such a short time, too. Looks the same to me. Right? <laughs> so, all right, oh, so this is where we're going to get the invite to the party. The moments like these make all the hard work worth it. Definitely. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the Wright Mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Oh, no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. We're only about halfway done, but the honest satisfaction on the client's face is enough for me to push through. Let's face it, in between my exasperation at Mr. Wright's antics and her, I've been burning the candles at both ends. I can't even close my eyes without seeing a dead girl's face. Dead girl. Dead. She's dead. I have to keep reminding myself that, burying my feelings as deep as they've buried her body six feet under, I shouldn't waste so much time on someone who's supposed to be gone. I've wasted so many years thinking about her already. There should be no need to bother myself with the dead when I should be bothering myself with the living. Too bad the living are usually as complicated, if not more, than ghosts of the past. But don't you have a party? Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. It's even more complicated when the living person in question is a pair of rich and famous socialites way past their honeymoon phase. And I've been somehow roped into being a relationship counselor. They've been married for a long time and they've hit a... How do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then... I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. But 
if the troubled husband with the neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. Why she thinks a single woman like me would be the best source of relationship advice is beyond me. Still, I talk and answer to the best of my abilities. Without realizing it, I'm already pouring out a part of me that I had thought were long dead, long gone. I'd like to believe my words will be of some help to Mrs. Wright. If I'm honest, though, they are some help to me, like the weight have, a, have been taken off my shoulders. Lorraine. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party. Oh, you really must, Marianne. The weight of what happened to her hasn't left me yet, did it? Maybe. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. I can't believe you want more drinks after last busy, night. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> right. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. Oh, we know enough about the if Lees. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. Were you Maybe in the Lees house about when time they I change that. having marital problems? We'll you see. Know, cheating so on if I can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. I shouldn't dwell on the dead, I shouldn't just callously forget about them, too. Saying that I have work left to do is easy enough excuse to make. I know how other people see me. They see someone so obsessed with their craft that she would so easily miss things like a party for it. Outside of the parlor, people hurry about here and there in preparation for the Wright's grand housewarming party. None spare me a glance as I slip past them, each working on their appointed roles and not daring to slack off while they work for what is probably the most powerful couple in Luxborn. I make it into the kitchen with ease, the wine cellar being my final destination. But when is a great task ever simple? Probably never. And this is a great task, isn't it? My greatest one yet that is worthy of being called a quest. I'm not acting as Marion McCullough, professional interior designer, when I chose to lie about being too busy for a party. I'm Mary McCullough, a lawful, neutral cleric with nine points in wisdom and eight in charisma. Just thinking of it like that makes it a bit cheesy, but it helps with the fear. It helps overcome the insane thought that I'm actively seeking out something that has been plaguing me for years. I might face my worst nightmare, or I might see nothing and find myself imagined grand quests fall flat. And who would have thought that the gatekeeper to my final quest would be someone I thought would be a valuable ally? Snell, hurry up, you snails. We are on a deadline and you are wasting my time. The butler comes from the cellar and into the kitchen, tailed by a couple of others, people who I assume are mostly are most likely chefs and bartenders. He raises a brow, seeing me just standing there by the hatch, by the trap door. It almost looks like he's going to throw me out for being in the kitchen without permission. But then he motions for the others to disperse and familiarize themselves with their surroundings. Meanwhile, he continues to stand there, preventing entry into the darkness beyond. What are you doing here, Fraulein? This is not the place for guests or in an architect right now. I request you leave. I was just looking around for any last minute things, yes? Yes, you have been doing that a lot. Looking around, snooping about. Huh. Now is not the time for such things. If you're not careful, people might think you are up to something. The look he gives me as he says this is almost chilling. If life was a game book, he'd probably be the true neutral warlock guarding the treasure room. A difficult opponent to beat with nine points in wisdom and eight in dexterity. Well, I'm not done yet. I actually need to go into the wine cellar. Just need a quick go at the place. So just don't mind me. I I'll be out of your hair soon enough. Go outside. Enjoy the party. Bask in the praise and adulation they will no doubt shower you with when the madam speaks highly of you. I love a butler. Me too. Surely you've had enough of this stuffy old kitchen by now. You do not want to cause trouble. And we'll just have to cause that trouble in the next episode. Trouble! I'm assuming there's a quick time event coming up, so I'm, I'm readying myself for this. Oh, he's got to prepare. Yeah. He's going to get his little dexterity fingers going. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.